My name is Rick Shine, and I'm going to talk about a paper that we published recently in the journal Functional Ecology about movement patterns in these magnificent reptiles, the northern blue tongue skink. The paper is entitled The Effect of Weather Conditions on Dispersal Behaviour of Free Ranging Lizards in Tropical Australia. The authors are Samantha Price Rees, Tom Lindstrom, Greg Brown, and myself. And the paper really is all about trying to work out the answer to a very general question. What are the conditions that cause a, a lizard like this to decide to leave one place that it's been living for a while and move somewhere else? The novelty of the paper is that we managed to use a couple of quite new methods that give us a much more power to answer the question. The first innovation was that instead of conventional VHF radio tracking where you can only locate your animal once or twice a day and you might disturb it when you do so, Sam managed to fit GPS transmitters to blue tongues so that the global positioning system would check the satellites and every hour it would get an accurate picture of exactly where the lizard was. And all we had to do was go and find the lizard every few days, recharge the batteries and download the memory. And the other new bit was that Tom Lindstrom, a Swedish mathematician, worked out a, a maximum likelihood method so that we could objectively tell the movements that a lizard made within its preferred piece of sort of nice, moist, sheltered habitat uh, from moves that it made across the intervening landscape to another patch of nice, cool, sheltered habitat. And having an objective means to tell the difference between those sort of local meanderings versus the long distance dispersals was really key. We found quite a few surprising results. In particular, it's so hot up in tropical Australia, the temperature wasn't a big problem. In fact, the lizards didn't move very much in the middle of the day. And it turned out that air pressure was the biggest uh, determinant of a lizard's movement patterns. But I think more generally, this kind of approach can tell us in enormous detail about when animals are moving and so why they're moving. And that can help us conserve these fantastic little creatures in their tropical homes.